Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Camille. I am currently a registered nurse as well as an incoming M1 medical student. Today, I just wanted to take some time and just talk to you guys about what IR is, interventional radiology, what we do, kind of the basics of the procedures, um, how they start, and then as well as just kind of getting to know the IR suite um, and so forth. So without further ado, let's get started. <music> Question number one, what exactly is interventional radiology, otherwise known as IR? In my own words, interventional radiology is really doing minimally invasive procedures using image guidance. Okay, So minimally invasive meaning we're going through arteries, veins, or directly into an organ or body area with a needle um, to get access. Right, We're not making any open incisions. Um, no big wounds or anything after the procedure, right? That's why we call it minimally invasive. Um, the imaging guidance techniques that we use, there's really three main ones. That's including fluoroscopy, ultrasound, and CT. There are some instances and in some areas or different hospitals that might use like MRI for some procedures. Um, however, the main three that I've seen and I've worked with include fluoroscopy, ultrasound, and CT, okay? Um, CT and ultrasound should be pretty familiar to you guys. Fluoroscopy, that one might be a little bit new. So just kind of explaining what fluoroscopy really is. It's just a fancy form of x-ray, okay? Um, so like if, I don't know if any, any of you have ever seen, so you go for an x-ray, a chest x-ray, for example, um, you either lay on a bed or you stand up against a wall and they have this big fancy camera that they take a picture of you, right? Um, so it's the same type of image that we obtain under fluoroscopy, it's just live x-ray, right? So a patient's laying on a table uh, and there's a C-arm uh, that has that x-ray component to it, right? So it's live imaging. So we can um, use the, the x-ray um, however we need to. There's a ton of procedures we do in IR, um, roughly 60 plus procedures um, that we do in the labs that I've worked at. Uh, however, there are always new advancing uh, techniques being developed, different procedures, whatnot. So these, the number of actual procedures in IR really varies, um, but roughly it's around 60 plus. Okay. Um, what kind of procedures do we do? Okay. So being minimally invasive, that means that we mainly focus on going through the arteries or veins um, or directly into a pocket of fluid, for example, if we're doing like an abscess drain or directly into a kidney if we want to place a nephrostomy tube, so into a solid organ structure. Um, that's another possibility. But main two that we do um, really is venous or arterial work. Okay, that's the vascular side of interventional radiology. Okay, so next question. How do we exactly start and do these procedures? Okay, um, so most procedures start the same exact way, okay? Um, I never say 100% because IR is so vast and we do so many different procedures that um, one time we might start a different way or we have to adapt to different patient circumstances or whatnot, okay? But mainly this is the way we start every procedure, okay? So we inject lidocaine to the area we wanna access, um, whether that be an artery or a vein or even to an organ. So lidocaine goes to that area then we use a needle to obtain access into whatever we're trying to get into. Again, whether that's a vein, an artery, or a mass, an abscess, a fluid pocket, whatever, okay? Once we have that needle in place, we advance a wire through that needle, okay? And then we take the needle off. That wire stays behind to keep our access, right, where we got into. And then over that wire, we typically put in what's called the sheath, okay? That sheath is just kind of a placeholder that then allows us to put different wires or catheters or devices through and into that vessel um, without causing damage to the surrounding tissue, right? So that's the purpose of the sheath. Okay, so now let's just focus solely on the vascular side of interventional radiology. So just the venous arterial side, okay? So we got access, right? We got lidocaine needle wire sheath is in place. Now what? Okay. Through that sheath, um, we can do one of two things initially, right? We can upsize the sheath to a bigger size sheath if we need to for the procedure we're doing, or we'll just go ahead right away and advance a wire, a diagnostic wire. And then over that wire, we will advance a catheter. Okay. So the way I like to um, say this part of what we're doing is you need railroad tracks before you can get a train across. 
Um, so the wire acts as your railroad tracks, right? Wherever you want to get into, whatever vessel, whatever your end goal is, um, you need the railroad tracks link, which is the wire, okay? Now, once your railroad tracks are in place, now you can advance the train, okay? Train. So now that the railroad tracks are laid down, um, what is our train, okay? So our train can be a variety of different things. Um, mainly, what we do first, at least, is we advance a catheter, okay? So that is our primary train, right? So we get the catheter up and across, and then through that catheter, what we can do is we can take pictures, um, meaning inject dye and take pictures of the area. We can see what's going on, looking for blockages, looking for tumors, looking for bleeding, um, whatever the purpose of that specific procedure is, okay? Once we are happy with our results or our imaging, then we can further proceed to try and fix or change or alter or whatever the goal of that procedure would be, okay? So our train in that next aspect could be something like coils, it can be stents, it can be balloons, or different arthrectomy devices or thrombectomy devices as well. Okay, um, so that can be the train in that aspect. Again, this really initial video is just trying to give you a very broad overview of what interventional radiology is and some of the different um, equipment names or different things that we do. Okay, um, so like I mentioned earlier, there's roughly about 60 plus procedures that we do in IR. Um, this can vary from facility to facility, um, as well as per interventional radiologist, right? So the actual doctor doing the procedure. Okay, um, but let me just go over some bread and butter procedures that we do, right? So what are some common procedures that we do day in, day out that are very typical, very standard for us, okay? Um, some of those include paracentesis, which is removal of fluid from the abdomen, thoracentesis, removal of fluid from the lung or the pleural space, right? Um, abscess drains, abscesses can occur anywhere in the body. So anywhere there's an abscess that needs to be drained, um, patient would come down to interventional radiology and get a drain placed, okay? Um, other very common procedures that we do include central venous access devices, right? Whether this be a dialysis catheter, where, whether this just be a line for different vasopressors or medications, antibiotics, etc. okay? Last one that's really, really common that we do almost all the time are port catheters, right? This is for um, infusion of chemotherapy, but not limited to only chemotherapy. It can also be used for patients that are hard sticks, anemic, require frequent transfusion, and expect this to be a long-term um, event where they need central access, okay? So those are just really the bread and butter procedures, meaning we do those day in, day out. Um, some emergent procedures that we do um, or specialize in an interventional radiology include things like pulmonary embolisms, um, DVT, so deep vein thrombosis, or cold legs, where there's actually um, arterial impact, um, and not just venous obstruction. Um, likewise, we do GI bleeds. They would come down to interventional radiology for us to help stop that bleeding. Also different organ trauma or um, trauma of vessels, veins, arteries, whatever the case may be. They would come down to interventional radiology so we can take a look. And again, the different minimally invasive techniques we have as well as the different devices can be very useful in trauma. So that was just a little bit about what IR is and some of the procedures that we specialize in and do, okay? Like I, I keep mentioning, right? There's so many different procedures out there that it's hard to narrow them down to just a select few. And I really just wanted to talk about the broad or the very common procedures that we do see um, in interventional. So now um, what I want to just kind of include in this video as well is what does a team consist of? For those that are interested in working in interventional radiology or just interested in, in you know, let's say you're a patient and you're gonna be getting a procedure, what can you expect from that day, right? Um, there will be a doctor, a procedure list, right? So the interventional radiologist that's gonna be doing the procedure in the room. There is gonna be a nurse or a circulator in the room as well, as well as a scrub tech. Um, so really just depending on the facility um, will dictate how many people you will have in the room, right? But for sure there will be someone there that's doing the procedure, there will be a nurse monitoring you, and then there will be a scrub at the table that's assisting the doctor with the procedure. So that's just a very broad overview. Um, I really hope that this video did help at least clear up some of your questions about interventional radiology, gave you kind of a little bit more of an inside look of what we do, how we get access, really the very basics, bare bones of what we do, how we do it, um, and 
I really hope that in future videos I can go more in depth and I think doing videos one per each procedure will be much more useful and help you understand more of what we do and how we do it. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe to this channel. Leave a thumbs up if you like this video. Give me a comment and share this video with your friends. I am always up to suggestions, so please, as I mentioned, leave a comment below what videos that you want in the future, any follow-ups, any questions you might have about this video. I am more than happy to answer them. And as always, have a great day and see you next time.